So I scored some plum wood that had been cut down not too far from the shop. And I got the, these huge chunks of the, of the trunk. I wish they hadn't cut it into shorter lengths because it would have made nice slabs. So I cut them into pieces that I could turn or start to get ready to turn. And I brought them into the shop. They're quite heavy at this point. <laughs> the cart is nice for, for lifting them up to the height of the bandsaw. And this one wasn't, wasn't quite flat on the bottom, so I fixed that. And I found a center, which I could use with my circle cutting jig. And I could cut a circle out of this piece on the bandsaw. And I could attach the face plate and use that same center. And start to turn the piece. And I thought with this one, I would try doing a live edge bowl. So I would do it the reverse way that I usually do it and have the rim of the bowl be on the outside of the tree. So the, so the bark and the rough shape of the tree are the rim of the bowl. So I started by doing the outside. And this bowl was always out of balance. So I could never turn the speed up real fast. So it was somewhat slow going. And it was just a really big piece of very hard wood. <laughs> but you could tell that it was gonna be really beautiful wood. And it was clear from the chunk of wood that it wasn't gonna be a perfect bowl without any bits of bark in it or cracks or funny weak places. It was just, it was so gnarly and misshapen which, was, which made it hard, harder to turn, made it harder to find the object in it that I wanted to make, but it also made the wood and the piece much more interesting. I started doing the inside. And I was drilling out the center kind of to check the depth and to have the center removed, which helps when turning the inside. And that's about as far as I got it at that point. And I let it dry at this point. And I can paint it with wax paint. And I can take the face plate off and paint the bottom of the bowl. I suppose this paint isn't really that important. So at this point, I let it dry. I think it's been five years since I first turned this. Maybe no, maybe three years. I think it's been three years since I've turned this. Yeah, two, 2014, April 2014 to April 2017. So it dried for three years. So I've had this bowl blank that I started a few years back and I made it I made it when I was making the storage for the lathe area and I needed I wanted to do a shot where I was throwing a bunch of chips at the doors of the new lathe storage to show that the chips couldn't get into the storage area and so this is what I turned to get those chips to be able to throw at the door. So now it's dry and I think it'd be nice to finish it because it actually could, um, could make a nice finished piece. I, because of the shape, I thought it'd be nice to do a natural edge bowl. I haven't done, done that before. I thought that'd be kind of fun. And this is cracked, but it hasn't cracked in a nice easy way to fix. So what I was thinking is to fill these cracks with resin because it'd be it's just too hard to cut all these out and fill them with wood and try and try and do something that I've done before. So uh, I'm thinking that's what I'll try and do. 
So now that it's dry, the bottom had become less than flat. <laughs> so I jointed the bottom and I reattached the face plate and I could put it back on the lathe. You can see that it's out of balance as it, as it swings there on the lathe. And I can basically get it round again. And it's even harder now because it's dry and it's harder to cut. <laughs> so it was really slow going, but it went okay. until a big chunk came off and hit me in the face mask. <laughs> and with, with the face mask, I was completely fine. It looks like the, the bark was folded in to the wood. I didn't even notice that. But you can see it's all, it's, it's just this little piece right here that was holding it on. So I think, I mean, one thought was to glue it back on, but there just isn't that much wood to glue to, so I'm just gonna, I think I'll just keep turning it like this. And I continued turning. I started working on the inside, which went fine, but it was slow. I did a little bit of really rough sanding and I tried to glue a few pieces of the bark that had come off. I wasn't really sure if this is going to work or not, but I figured I would give it a try. And at this point, I thought it would probably be good to stop and fill the cracks with resin as the, the cracks were sort of fraying on the inside. When you're turning and there's no support behind that edge, the, the wood was starting to come apart. I tried to clean those up a little bit and get them ready for the, for the resin. And my first attempt at putting the resin in, I just used tape and I tried to do it on the lathe and I, I sort of forgot that the resin was liquid <laughs> and it just kind of poured out. I think it was both coming through the tape and that I didn't have the cracks level as they were on the lathe. So my first attempt was kind of a failure as the resin just didn't stay where it was supposed to. <laughs> So I brought everything inside the house as I was heating the bowl up and the resin up to make everything flow better. It made more sense just to do all this in the house. So my next attempts at doing the resin, I propped up the bowl so that the cracks would be level and I used hot glue and chipboard and tape to try to really seal the bottoms of the cracks so the resin wouldn't just pour out. And this worked pretty well. I had a couple of times where it was a problem. I think it was where the bark and the cracks were next to each other, and it was really hard to make a seal and to find where the resin was coming through, but it, but it worked in the end. So with, with this one big crack in the bowl, I used hot glue and some chipboard to make sort of a mold or a, or a bottom for that crack. And then more tape. <laughs> and heat it back up again. And I was amazed with this big, this big void that I had to fill. It actually stayed where it was supposed to and made a little pool like it was supposed to. Now, I don't have a big enough vacuum chamber to put this in a, in a low pressure situation to get the bubbles out. So it's just kind of what it is. <laughs> it turned out fairly clear. It, isn't, it really wasn't too bad as far as bubbles go. And once I had all the resin in, bring it back to the lathe, and I cleaned up the bark that I had glued back on. And I did the final turning. So it got even slower and even more careful as, as the rim of the bowl was getting thinner and thinner. But everything went fine. Nothing came off the bowl at this point. And I did a final scrape to get the surface as smooth as I could before I sanded. And I could do the inside. Mm -hmm. 
Then I could start sanding once I had the, the form set and I went through all the grits. I started by doing it the way that I usually do it where I have the lathe on and I just kind of move this, the sander around. But there were spots that I just wasn't able to get that way so I, I did a bunch of it where the lathe was turned off and I just sanded it like it was an object. And that actually worked pretty well. And I sanded the resin up to 2000 trying to get it a little bit polished. So now I've got the top part of the bowl done and I need to do the bottom or the foot or the base. And this was a project in itself because I couldn't just push the bowl up against a big plate and hold it. I had to sort of hold it from the inside. So I made a jig to do the foot of the bowl and I needed a little circle, a big circle and a ring. So I cut those out on the CNC machine. So I cut out the little circle, now I'm cutting out the ring, and then I can cut out the big circle. The little circle will go on the inside of the bowl, and the big circle will attach to a face plate, which will attach to the lathe, and the ring will go on the outside of the bowl and hold the bowl to the bigger circle with some bolts. So I need to hold the smaller circle away from the bigger circle and somewhat of a set distance based on the bowl. So I figured that would be six inches. And what I wanted to do was make a box that would go between the big circle and the little circle. So I cut out four pieces. Then I could drill holes in the sides of those for screws. And I subtracted the width on the two inner pieces so it would be a square in the end. Cleaned up the hole so the pieces would sit nice and flat to each other. And I clamped everything together where everything was as flush as I could make it. Drilled through the holes and added the screws. And basically made a box. <laughs> now this box can attach to the smaller circle, which I can drill holes into. Then clamp that in place and attach it with screws. Now you can kind of see how it's going to work where the bowl's held basically between the, the little circle and the ring. So I can attach the face plate to the bigger circle, and I can put that on the lathe. And then I wanted to center the box and the littler circle. So I did that on the lathe and kind of moved it around until it was as centered as I could get it. And I marked where that was, and I attached the box to the big circle, then reattached the face plate <laughs> because the screws were behind the face plate. And then the inner part of the jig is made. Now I can mount that on the lathe. One little mistake I made, I used the MDF from the table of the old CNC machine. And because I had flattened that, it wasn't the same thickness everywhere. So it, it put a little bit of a wobble in the jig. But really all that needed to be round and true to the lathe was the surface of the small circle that touches the bowl. So I turned that on the lathe, and that made it perfect to the roundness of the lathe, if that makes sense. <laughs> now I did sort of the same thing on the ring, where I eased over the edge that touches the bowl, just to give it a, a little bit of a bigger surface where it touches the bowl, so it won't scratch the surface of the bowl as much. And it seemed to be okay in the end. And then I can put the ring on. So I have to kind of slip it in behind the tailstock. Then the ring and the big circle get bolted together. And this is what gives the force that holds the bowl in place. I figured since I cut out the circles on the CNC machine, I could do an odd number of bolts because I could draw those in the computer really easily. So I did seven. <laughs> which isn't, I think, what you would normally do if you had made these rings by hand. And it doesn't make it any better. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> then I could turn the bottom, finally, which actually went pretty quick. Now on the bottom, I sort of had a, an idea that I wanted to do little feet instead of doing like a rim 
or a ring that the ball sits on. So my thought was to turn a ring into the bottom, then carve away most of that ring and leave some little feet that the ball would sit on. So the curve of the bowl and the curve of the bowl inside the ring kind of had to match up, but the ring was in the way. So I, so I had to do that by eye and it worked out okay in the end. So I cut the ring and I sanded everything and basically finished it as though this was the finished bowl. Then came back with the grinder with a sanding disc on it and carved away most of that ring and left three three little feet or three legs. And this actually went a lot quicker and worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. It was actually pretty easy. And I think the feet complement the randomness of the rim of the bowl. I think I think it gives a, a feeling of lightness to the whole piece. And then I could take everything apart, and it's kind of that moment of truth. It looked okay. Then I could put finish on, which is when it really starts to sing, and the, the wood is just gorgeous. So this bowl was a lot of experimenting, and there's a few little bits that aren't quite perfect, but overall it, it turned out really nice. And I learned a lot of things that I hadn't done before. And then once the finish dried, I tried a little buffing on it. Cause it really, it really felt like this piece wanted a, a really high luster to it. I, th I think usually I like more of a matte finish, but this really felt like it wanted to look polished. Like it just had a beautiful shine to it. The wood almost looks like stone because it's got so much figure in it. Thanks for watching.